guys, happy Friday. So for the Q&A today, I have been getting many requests if I can do a Q&A or skincare video related to tips for how to cope with dry winter skin that is oh so problematic this time of year in particular. Um, dry skin is uh, something that I think everybody will encounter at some point in their life, but there are certainly um, particular demographics, particular groups who are more at risk. Um, as we get wiser, as I like to say, or older, our um, body starts to produce less oil and our skin barrier tends to, tends to be a little bit more leaky. Also, people who have a history of eczema or um, numular eczema, for example, as my prior Q&A addressed, those individuals have a tendency towards dry skin. Some individuals have a genetic tendency towards dry skin as a result of a deficiency in one of the proteins in the skin barrier, filaggrin. Um, and then a variety of different medical conditions can come along with, can, can be accompanied by, by the nuisance of dry skin. Thyroid disease, for example, is one, one such condition. Certain medications can put you at increased risk for having dry skin and being, being plagued by dry skin. Accutane or prescription retinoid, systemic retinoids that you take by mouth, namely Accutane or isotretinoin, uh, lead to dry skin. Also, a variety of blood pressure medications can, can lead to dry skin, uh, antihistamines, all of these things. And if you're somebody who has to take a lot of medications, there is a good chance that just the sheer volume of medications that you're on may set you up for, for dry skin. A lot of medications affect um, how, how our sweat glands and oil glands respond, and as a result, we oftentimes can be left with excessively dry skin. But everybody out there is, is at risk, so having skin basically puts you at risk. So I think this video hopefully will, will, will help most of you out there. Um, I think the places on the body that are most important to, to pay attention to and where dry skin most often occurs is on the lower legs, um, the shins in particular. Other areas of the body though can also be affected, the torso, the extremities, and the face in particular. Things that put you, put you, set you up for dry skin though are oftentimes some of the things that you're doing. Probably the most problematic behavior that contributes to dry skin is your bathing practices. How often that you're ba how often you're bathing, uh, if and what soap you're using, how much soap you're using, the temperature of the water, all of these things can, can dry out the skin. And uh, then uh, not only your bathing practices, but also a failure to moisturize. Um, and a failure to moisturize on an ongoing basis or use a moisturizer. Some people only use moisturizers when they get dry skin and then they stop using them once the dry skin gets better and then the dry skin will come back eventually. So a lot of times it's things that you are doing. And the reason that dry skin develops is that actually we start to lose, we start to lose water out of, out of the top layer of the epidermis, epidermis, the stratum corneum. The stratum corneum is like, like this big, thick kind of shell that we have and it uh, can dry out. It's not really living, but it is, it is a dynamic part of our biology and it helps to, to form a barrier. It can become leaky and let more water out. And as it lets more water out, it gets drier. And, and as a result, the skin becomes dry, dull, and also can be very, very itchy. And transepidermal water loss is kind of the major factor that, that leads to this. When you bathe, when you expose the skin to water, um, it kind of opens the skin up a little bit and water from deep within the skin starts to evaporate out, leading to, leading to dryness and desiccation of that, of that top layer of the skin, the stratum corneum. So water, water on the skin is actually an irritant, and here's, here's why. First of all, water um, strips off some of the, the barrier a little, uh, to a certain extent, and then water has to evaporate, right? So we get out of the shower, and a lot of the water uh, that we put on our skin is gonna evaporate right away, and if it doesn't evaporate, we're toweling it off. And as it evaporates in the atmosphere, and as we're toweling it off, 
water from the deeper layers of the skin follows and is eva evaporates off subsequently and is toweled, toweled off to a certain extent as well. So that that's kind of what what sets people up for developing dry skin is that process of trans epidermal water loss um, from from wetting the skin and from excessive bathing. On top of that, however, are two other factors in your bathing patterns, and that is the temperature of the water. Really, really hot, hot water increases the transepidermal water loss. So not only the hot water, but how long you are in that hot water. Uh, people love to take long, hot showers, and it's probably one of the worst things you can do for your skin, even though it feels so good, especially when it's freezing cold. That's, that's like the, the thing that you wanna do, um, is get in a hot shower and stay there. Worst thing you can do for your skin, no matter who you are, uh, because that, that heat, that hot water, um, really is conducive to disrupting the skin barrier, and warm water evaporates more quickly we all we all can appreciate that right you put you put lukewarm water out in a pot uh, it's gonna eventually evaporate out and eventually quote boil but if you heat it up you know it boils much faster and in the water subsequently evaporates into the atmosphere much faster same principle holds true with wetting your skin and evaporative water losses from your skin the hotter the temperature of the water that you are using to to bathe with the more evaporative water loss you're going to subsequently experience. Not only that, the heat, you know, dissolves some of the some of the lipid layer and just sets you up for dryness. And then the duration of time that you're in there obviously matters uh, because uh, the longer you're in there, you know, you kind of the more you're cooking and the more the more dissolving you're doing. So that really matters. Um, and then the other thing is what you're doing while you're in the shower. People uh, love using body washes and love using soaps. And you guys always want me to recommend a soap that you could use to your skin that's not gonna lead to dry skin. And frankly, it's really hard to. Um, all soap and just the sheer act of mechanically abrading the skin can and does contribute to dry skin. So I will leave you with this tip as far as cleansers and, and body washes. Uh, avoid washing or scrubbing the extremities. You really don't, you definitely don't need to use soap in those areas. Um, so, you know, really just a sh quick, short shower water rinse removes the majority of oil, sebum, dirt off of our skin. And in the winter time, uh, this is already a lot less than it would be, say, in the hot, sweaty summer time. So really just a short contact time of water. And then selecting a non-soap, gentle body cleanser, ideally a cream-based cleanser, for use in the folds, in the skin folds. So those are areas that can get really sweaty and macerated, and sometimes the bacteria on our skin can kind of take over um, and cause, cause itchy rashes, sometimes breakouts and things like that in people. So those areas are, are probably okay to be using soap on an ongoing basis. They're not really gonna dry out and lead to dry skin. Um, like in the armpits and in the groin, uh, for example. And if you, if you have um, pendulous folds on your torso, kind of in those areas as well, well. So uh, not only the soap, but then a lot of people gravitate towards using a loofah or using a scrubby brush, a back scrubber. And you can just imagine you're just scrubbing away your skin barrier and setting and, and opening up the floodgates for water to come out. So avoid using loofahs and scrub brushes. Um, a plain white washcloth is fine for lathering in the fold areas, but you really don't need to go to go scrubbing scrubbing your skin. Same holds true with your face. Uh, people ask me why I don't recommend the spin brushes and the sonic spin brushes. This mechanical exfoliation just disrupts the skin barrier further and sets you up for more, for more water loss out of the skin. So um, cut back on the mechanical exfoliants, but also the chemical exfoliants as well. Um, I would say that's, that's largely true for, for your facial skincare routine. Uh, you know, for the most part, I think consumers want to over exfoliate, particularly women, uh, feel like they've got to exfoliate and peel and that this has some sort of anti-aging property. And by and large, you know, a little bit of exfoliation maybe on a weekly basis is what's recommended. But if you're already using, 
a, a retinoid or an acid. I have videos on, on retinoids and videos on acids all this down below, like alpha hydroxy acid or beta hydroxy acid. If you're only using one of those, I mean, you are exfoliating. So adding a whole bunch of them into your routine doesn't make a whole lot of sense, oftentimes for the most part, and really is setting you up for, for dry skin on the face. Um, so, you know, kind of paring down your exfoliation, both mechanical and chemical, um, really, really is helpful. Um, and then the kind of question that I will get though is, well, what's a good way to remove water resistant sunscreen from the body, um, you know, on our neck and stuff like that? What is a good wash to use? And I would recommend just using a oil based cleanser, just, just a gentle oil will dissolve uh, water resistant sunscreen uh, pretty easily and then rinse off in the shower and is simultaneously nice and emollient on the skin. So that would be my recommendation. Check the description box. I will list some non-soap cleansers that I recommend as well as moisturizers, which is my next tip. Moisturizers are key. The best time to um, never forget your moisturizer is immediately when you step out of the shower or bath and the skin is still wet. That is really the best time um, or the time to make sure, I will say, you use a moisturizer is when the skin is, is when you have to get your skin wet. Um, go ahead and slather it onto that wet skin right away. And what this does is the moisturizer creates a nice seal and stops that transepidermal water loss. And I have videos on my favorite moisturizers. Again, I will list in the description box down below, but you want something thick, um, thick and uh, occlusive. My favorites are things like Vanny Cream, moisturizing cream. This is fragrance free, doesn't have any common allergens in it. I also recommend CeraVe moisturizing cream. There are tons of fantastic body body creams that are occlusive out there. I will list in the description box. Cetaphil, for example, is one. I'll try and list some down below as well that are available in the UK. I know many of you watch me from there, um, and you know I I can make some recommendations for some. I, in um, like one or two in Australia that I'm, I'm familiar with because I know a lot of you guys um, watch me from, from various countries around the world, which is so cool. Um, but not only the moisturizing cream, but areas of the body where, where you've got really active, persistent, stubborn, dry patches, go even more occlusive with a greasy, greasy ointment. Um, I love CeraVe healing ointment. You can put these on your face, by the way, these greasy ointments. I get questions about that, um, like Vaseline, Vanny Ply. You can put these on the face. People ask me, is that okay? For some people, it might cause kind of acne-like rashes, but for the most part, they are fine. They're not necessarily poor clogging, but some people get uh, a little irritated by them on the face. Uh, don't No, they don't cause milia, um, but yeah. Um, for real persistent, stubborn areas on the face that you're trying to get the dryness to, to get to get better much faster, go with go with an ointment on there. And again, capitalize on, on putting the brakes on transepidermal water loss when you do have to wet the skin, and make sure you get it on, on that wet skin. Um, but uh, you can moisturize and should moisturize a few times a day, um, especially when, when the skin is actively dry and you're trying to repair it. Uh, and you don't need to go wetting the skin again. Uh, I get that question a fair amount. Well, it, since it's best to moisturize wet skin, should we wet the skin multiple times a day? No. Minimize the number of times you, you wet the skin, but when you wet the skin, make sure you don't forget your moisturizer. That, that is really important. Uh, things that you can do in your home, uh, you know, things that contribute to dry skin, particularly in the winter time, are just really the, the drop in humidity in our atmosphere. Getting a cool mist humidifier and keeping it in your bedroom at night can really, really make a huge difference in the health of your skin. Merely having humidity in, in the air can help a ton. Uh, so if you if you live in a dry climate or battling winter skin, get a cool mist humidifier. I'll list some down below. They are great and really, really do, really do help quite a bit. And then the other tip would be to um, pay attention to your heaters and um, in your home. 
Standing, standing in front of heaters when you're cold is one of the worst things you can do for your skin. It's kind of akin to taking a long hot shower as far as pulling water out of the skin. So if you are sitting next to a little space heater, um, you know, warming yourself, I personally, when I'm in the car, I love to crank up the heater and my face always suffers the consequences. It, you know, I can always tell when I've had my heater on in the car the day before because the next day my skin, my face is a lot drier. So, um, you know, be really stingy with your heat, your electric bill. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's not fun, but, you know, get some blankets, um, uh, you know, warm water bottle maybe like, like, um, in the Downton Abbey days, <laughs> hot water bottle. Um, so yeah, try and try and cut down on the on the heaters. So I talked about the humidifier. I talked about the bathing practices. The other um, situation in the winter time that is popular and frequently encountered is we like to, a lot of people like to go skiing in the winter time. You know that's ski season, and the combination of high altitude and just the winter environment uh, is very very drying on the skin and can set you up for dry skin and chapped skin and chafing and dry parched cracked skin. So going into ski, you know, approaching skiing first of all you know, outside of the realm of dry skin, make sure you're wearing a broad spectrum sunscreen while you are on the slopes. Really, really a lot of UV exposure up there. Um, but uh, focusing on, on dry skin, uh, applying a, a greasy, uh, thick ointment to areas of the face, areas of the skin that are going to be exposed to, to the environment, is a really prudent measure to to cut down on that. Uh, you just go ahead and enhance your skin barrier with with a thick and, and greasy ointment, and continue to reapply it while you're up there. Um, that will help cut down on that a lot. Also, if you are out walking outside and uh, you know you you have that that cold blowing wind in your face that dries out the skin, the the um, occlusive ointment is really, really a good approach for that. Another tip though for approaching your moisturizing when you are actively in a situation of dry, dry winter skin that's uncomfortable and you're trying to get it better fast, one thing that you can do that is very effective is to put the moisturizer on and occlude it with a piece of fabric. So for example, say you have, um, Say you have uh, really dry skin on the lower legs. You can, uh, when you get out of the shower, slap that greasy moisturizer on to the wet skin right away, as I said, and then take some gauze, uh, cotton gauze, and wrap the area in, in gauze. That will really, I mean, that is, that's a physical barrier on there in addition to the moisturizing barrier. That will really keep the water in. Doing that, you know, um, a few consecutive nights, you will get your skin barrier back to, to where you want it to be. Um, you know, as far as the face doing something like that, I, that's where sheet masks, I have always been motivated to use sheet masks in that manner in that you have the skin wet, you put a nice gentle moisturizer on the wet skin, and then you take a sheet mask put it on top and um, they sell these silicone overlay masks and you kind of incubate there in that with that with that barrier occluded on there that is a good way to to rehydrate the skin and to quickly repair the skin barrier. The problem is, however, that a lot of the sheet masks out there have a lot of irritating chemical uh, fragrances and um, and that sort of thing. So what I recommend you do is you can go on Amazon and buy just just the sheet masks, um, the the fabric sheet masks, kind of akin to the gauze, that have nothing in them. They're just dry. Um, so get get those wet in just a little bit of water, and then when you you moisturize your face, put the damp sheet mask on, and then put that silicone overlay mask on on top, and just hang out. I don't know, watch a Netflix movie, um, decorate your tree if you celebrate Christmas. Do something fun for a few hours because you're not going to be able to like go to bed that way. Um, just a few hours for the face is really all you need, and then take it off, and that will that will get your skin barrier repaired much more quickly than than if you are just trying to put moisturizers on by themselves. So those would be my tips for really getting the dry skin better faster. 
Then another thing I'll say um, that I've said in a lot of my eczema videos before, when the skin barrier is impaired and we're losing water on the skin and becomes dry and parched, uh, the symptom that follow that, that goes along with that is itch. Uh, the little nerves and, and things that innervate our skin, they, you know, they start to get hyper excitable and that can lead to itch. Itch makes you want to scratch. It is, it's like, you know, blowing in someone's face, they're going to blink. Uh, when you have an impaired skin barrier and you're, you're losing water, the reflex is to scratch. Uh, it's itchy, you're going to scratch and the compulsion to scratch can be overwhelming. And when you scratch the skin, you further agitate that skin barrier. It's a really, really hard cycle to break. So my tip for that situation is to um, take either your moisturizing cream uh, and put it on right away. As soon as you feel the, the compulsion or the need to itch, put it on the skin and just rub it in a circle. And that will, that will help quelch that compulsion, that sensation to itch, it will help soothe it, but you're not physically, mechanically disrupting the skin barrier. And if it's really, really itchy, and, and this is something that you're coping with, I am a fan of, uh, CeraVe makes an anti-itch cream that contains the ingredient Promoxine, which just kind of soothes the skin. Um, it's not a steroid itch cream. Uh, it just kind of soothes the skin, and I'm a fan of putting that on um, and, and rubbing in a circle. I used to recommend Sarna Original. It has menthol in it, as well as fragrance, and so sometimes that can be irritating and people can have problems with those, so I don't really recommend those anymore. But CeraVe makes a fragrance-free Promoxin anti-itch cream. I'll list it down below. That if you are battling with itch and the compulsion to scratch, go ahead and just slap a little dab of that on and rub it in a circle. And to and to really kick it up a notch, the other thing that you can do is keep your moisturizer in the refrigerator. Putting it on the skin cold further distract, distracts the little uh, neurocutaneous network that is, that's all excited. It, for, it helps to further distract it. It sees cold and it, you know, and it calms down, <laughs> uh, for, for lack of a better descriptor. It really can help to distract those, those chemical, those, those neurocutaneous signals that, that make you want to scratch and further agitate your skin barrier. But I can't emphasize enough, it's really important to, to uh, address and break the itch scratch cycle in dry skin. Um, you can't you can't break the the compulsion to to scratch. You're gonna want to scratch, um, and so this this intervention with the moisturizer is a is a way to to break that, because itch becomes chronic. Itch can become chronic very quickly, and it can become very hard to 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 get better because those little itching and a hyper excitable um, itch nerves and things and chemicals they kind of build up there in that little itchy spot and they get like you know they like gang up on you quite 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 literally they gang up on you and stay there it can make a persistently itchy spot that can drive you can drive you up a wall all winter and it will affect the quality of the sleep that you get at night um, and really really affect your overall quality of life so put the brakes on that as soon as as you can hopefully this tip is helpful Breaking the itch scratch cycle is, is an imperative part of addressing the skin barrier if you have itch for sure. Um, but anyways, guys, those are my tips for dry skin. I will list all of my favorites down below in the description box for you guys. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, subscribe and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys.